How's it going everyone? It's Derek Lamru, and today we're gonna to be breaking down a commercial and show you how using a dolly can amplify your work. As a director, I'm always trying to think of new things. I'm looking at movies for inspiration, and camera movement is something I believe can take a shot to a whole new level. Whether it's handheld, gimbals, cranes, dollies, all of these things make the viewer feel something different when they're watching a film. Every project I work on, I think about camera movement in pre-production. When I was coming up for the idea for this commercial, I knew I wanted to take a different approach to your normal sports ad. I wanted something subtle, and calm. We had four points that we needed to get across for the client, and that's when I came up with the idea for four scenes with four dollies. I wanted the audience to feel as if they were creeping into the worlds of these characters, and with a dolly, we could get a long, smooth run pushing into our town. Let's break it down. All right, the backstory behind the entire video, somehow in each scene, there's an element of abuse, neglect, harassment, bullying, something is happening in each one of these scenes, and then we're dollying into the victim of each of these scenes. And we're showing the negative signs of what people don't necessarily see, hence the title of the commercial, Look Beyond. Look beyond what you can see. The locker room is our opening scene to the commercial. So the backstory behind this scene is we have our main player here, he's doing up his shoes, and then our coach comes in from the background and walks into the scene to talk to him, to give him that pregame talk. The dolly's moving forward into the scene as the coach walks this way towards our main subject. What's really important is this scene is that we're going from a wide shot to see the tight shot on the subject's face. That's a repeated theme in every single one of these scenes. When we first walked into the room and we did our location scout, we knew that we wanted a long row of lockers. It was important that on one side, we were gonna be pushing past something so that we could put little objects like this along the way. Shout out to our set deck. In my mind, I wanted the same type of lockers on the other side, but after looking at a bunch of different locations, I couldn't find that. So we had lockers available to us on both sides. We landed our subject kind of in the middle of the lockers, and now the blocking was set to take place. Our subject wasn't really moving, and our other talent, the coach, was coming into the scene. So there wasn't a ton of blocking that they needed to do. He just needed to make sure that he was done tying his shoes as the dolly was about midway through, and then the coach was at the end of the dolly on his walk up. It was important that at the end of the dolly, the coach walked into frame and then walked out of frame. All right, jumping to scene number two. This is our bedroom scene where we have this 11 year old girl. She's alone in a room. She's just finished up a basketball game. She gets home and all of a sudden her phone starts blowing up. She's getting texts, Facebook messages, notifications, but they're not good ones. This is cyberbullying. She starts getting these text messages and we start to feel her world kind of shrinking in. Again, we're pushing into the scene. We're pushing past the doors here on both sides of this hallway. It's a very narrow hallway. And then when we get to the end of our track, we're left with just her to focus in on. You know, we don't just want a big black tunnel to her. Our DP and our lighting team did a really good job of adding little subtle points of interest in the scene so that we're not just pushing past white doors. You know, we have a few highlights here. We have obviously our highlights in the background, but it was important for me that this scene had a bunch of different contrasting colors. So we see the blues and the yellows here, and that just kind of makes the world of this character feel even darker. And then at the end of the dolly, I still wanted to be able to see all of the details in her face. So it was important that when they were going through the lighting setup for this, that they had enough light so that we could see into her eyes and really feel how she was feeling. There was a window off to the side here, which kind of helped motivate the moonlight that the DP and gaff team decided to use. And then our set deck team came in and really made the space that we feel on camera populated with all of these little posters and lamps, gadgets, medals. We wanted to feel like this little girl was a basketball star, or at least she thought she was. Are you looking for a dolly? Then I've got the right dolly here for you. It can go as fast as you want with big wheels. This dolly is all terrain, off mode, on road, back road, country road, front road, side road. You can take this dolly wherever you want. This dolly here holds up to a thousand pounds and can do some pretty cool stuff.
All right, moving on to our third scene, our outdoor scene. Potentially one of the hardest scenes to film. Why? Because outside is so unpredictable. We didn't know what we were gonna expect. We did a location scout. When we got to the location, uh, I think it was two weeks before, we found the angle of where we wanted to film. We knew that we wanted to have a bunch of depth in the background. Nick wanted to make sure that we were able to sneak in some of these street lamps. And we landed on having this building in the background to add some interest because it was at nighttime. This scene here, we have a family. They just finished a basketball game. The son is in the back seat and the camera is pushing in on him as the family reflects on a very bad game. So after the camera pushes into the car, it was important to me that on the wide shot of this push in, we established that we're in some type of parking lot. We have, you know, what's supposed to be a basketball court in the background. And then inside the car, we can clearly see that there's mom, dad, and their kid in the car. When we were setting up the dolly for this shot, we wanted to be far enough back that we could see the whole car in the frame. Um, but at the same time, we didn't want to be able to see the tracks. So it was a little bit of trial and error to see what would be a best fit for this scene. What we landed on shooting on like a 25, 30 mil. And then we were doing the zoom in just like in every other scene for when we got closer to our subject to even put more emphasis on them in addition to our dolly. The lighting team did a great job of making sure that the inside light felt natural, but also there was enough level on our subjects to make it feel like their emotions were coming across on camera. All right, our final scene. This is the pivotal moment in the video where we start to realize not everything's okay. In this scene here, we have a referee and we have a coach. The coach is not super happy after the game. So he's coming in to yell at her. In this scene, we're like a bystander sitting in the bleachers watching the scene unfold. At the beginning of this dolly, it was important to me that we got as wide as we could at the back of the gym. I wanted to be able to see these bleachers on either side. So the DP and I, when we did the location scout, we figured out how we could get the camera as far back as possible. And then that kind of set our point where our actors were gonna stand because our track is only so long. So we knew that if we had 16 feet of track, our actors would have to stand here before we started to see the track in the shot. This shot's actually really interesting because we see so many different highlights in the back, but our focus is on the subject. You know, there's a lot of black area around them and we've got a light hanging on some truss above them, which was a fun story in itself. We had to bring in a scissor lift and that took forever. But for one single shot, it probably took longer to bring the scissor lift and lay the plywood all across the floor than actually do the shot. So when we set up this dolly, what was important to me is that we could see both characters. So it had to be a really wide shot. I wanted to see head to toe of both people. And then when we pushed in, I wanted to get as tight as possible, but still seeing both of them. I think by the end of the shot, we've got like a medium on both of them. And then we punch in for some really extreme close-ups that you'll see in some of the other videos as well. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. And don't forget, just tap, tap that subscribe button for more videos. Uh, you know, we're setting up here at uh, the parking lot. It is probably minus five. Um, really? It's like seven degrees. I mean, I was making it sound worse than it was. Oh. Come on, <laughs> we're all bundled up. It's for the show here. Like 50, 75 pounds here. Put the ratchet on the bottom and that on top and it'll be fine. Okay.